life is not at all that bad, my friend. Mm -hmm. If you believe in yourself, if you believe there's someone who walks through life with you, you'll never be alone. Just learn to reach out and open your heart. Lift up your hands to God and He'll show you the way. And He said, cast your burdens upon me, those who are heavily laden. Come to me, all of you who are tired of carrying heavy loads. For the yoke I will give you is easy, and my burden is light. Come to me and I will give you rest. When you feel the world is tumbling down on you, and you have no one that you can hold on to, just face the rising sun and you'll see hope and there's no need to run. Lift up your hands to God and he'll make you feel all right. And he said, cast your bird then upon me, all those who are heavily laden. Come to me, all of you who are tired of carrying heavy loads. For the yoke I will give you is easy, and my burden is life. Come to me and I will give you rest. And he said, cast your burdens upon me, those who are heavily laden. Come to me, all of you who are tired of carrying heavy loads. For the yoke I will give you is easy, and my burden is light. Come to me, and I will give you rest. Amen. Amen. Cindy, we can't wait. Amen. Cindy will uh, give a teaching. Uh, on uh, uh, what's it called that um, promises was that that trouble 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 no decisions decisions <laughs> and more decisions 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 <laughs> decisions I'm sorry all right okay. are, are we ready yes above your green Cindy with your on your shirt and on your your screen yes <laughs> amen all right, so the title of the message today is Decisions, Decisions, and More Decisions, Using God's Gift of Discernment to Make the Right Decision. So today I am sharing about 
decisions we face and how to use God's gift of discernment to help us make the right decision. And this teaching is based on the assumption that you all have all made that decision to follow uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, which involves believing Jesus is the son of God sent by God to die in our place, who paid the price for our sins at the cross and reconciled us to our father through his death and resurrection. So deciding to follow Jesus or not is the most important decision you can make on this earth because it has eternal consequences. So when I started thinking about and praying about this message, um, we're gonna be talking about decisions, but I had to say this first, it's very important. And by the way, it's not too late to accept Jesus as your Lord and savior. Just this week at work, a 90 year old plus, she's plus a uh, year old lady, um, she accepted Jesus as her Lord and Savior. So, you know, there's Good always, uh, as long as there's left life, there is breath, there is time. And so now when she passes away, she knows that her sins are forgiven and she has eternal life with Christ. Amen. Amen. So let's go to the next slide. So decisions discerning God's direction. So according to a source that I went to, just one source, as adults during a 24 hour period, we make approximately 35,000 decisions. Can you believe that? 35,000 decisions in 24 hours. Many decisions we make just automatically uh, without much thought, like it's time to get up, we roll out of bed, uh, we brush our teeth, shower, get dressed. But there's others, other decisions that really, when we make them, they may impact the rest of our life. And so and, uh, decisions are very, very important. Um, are you I guess the question today is, are you facing an important decision today? You may be trying to discern whether to move to a new city or a new uh, state or out of the country. You may be thinking about changing jobs or buying a new home. Uh, perhaps your decision involves others. Perhaps, it, perhaps it's whether to date someone, to marry someone, or even after you marry, have children or not. Um, maybe you're making a decision regarding your, your medical uh, condition. Should you have surgery? Should you change physicians? Should you have a second opinion? The list of decisions go on and on. The good news that I want to share with you today is that God provides and equips his children to make the right decision. So I'm sharing about how the gift of discernment from the Holy Spirit helps us make decisions that please God and keeps us on that straight and narrow path. Jesus speak, spoke about in Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. So if we go to the next slide. The list of the nine uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit is found in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 to, uh, verse 8 to 10. It is written in verse 10, to another, the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. The gift of discerning of spirits enables us to recognize whether or not something is truly from God. Why is this important? We are warned over and over through scripture to be aware of false prophets and yes, false teachers. In 1 John 4, 1 to 4, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know you the, that the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world. The next slide we talk about the purpose of the gift of discernment, the discerning of spirits. So the gift of discernment enables us to recognize, identify, and distinguish between various kinds of spirits that confront us. Why is this important? Well, we live in a spiritual world, and even though we can't see it, we do. Our enemies are not flesh and blood. They are of the spiritual realm. And we have Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. 
for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. The next slide. This gift also enables us um, or helps us to recognize good and evil, truth and error. We need discernment in full operation in us so that we know the truth to make the right decision to keep us on the path God has called us to walk. We live now and have been all our lives in a world of disinformation. It seems like it's been increasing though the last few years. We need to be able to discern what is true. Remember the devil is the father of all lies. John 8, 44, when he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Remember, the devil is the author of confusion. 1 Corinthians 14, 33, for God is not a God of confusion. He is a God of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Amen. The gift of this sermon empowers us to distinguish or discern a person. You might want to go to the next slide, please. There we go. The gift of discernment empowers us to distinguish or discern a person, statement, situation, atmosphere, or environment. And sometimes you may hear during a prayer group meeting, uh, Bob may stop the prayer group and he may uh, discern that there is a uh, spirit of heaviness or oppression or depression uh, that is in our group. So he'll stop and then we'll pray and rebuke that evil spirit. Okay, next slide. The gift of discernment helps us to recognize and distinguish the source of the situation or message. Is the situation or message from God or is it from me, my flesh, or is it from Satan? Today you have already and you will continue to witness and experience the gift of discernment in full operation. As our prayer leader and others, which include you, are discerning, you're listening, and you're obeying the promptings of the Holy Spirit on what direction to take, what words to share, or what scripture to read. In the next slide, we share a gift of discernment in action in, in uh, 1 Kings 3. God gave Solomon an invitation to ask for whatever he wanted. Solomon responded in verse 9, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? God commended Solomon for not asking for a long life, riches, or for the life of his enemies, but rather requested an understanding heart. God did give Solomon a wise and understanding heart. Solomon is known in scripture as a very wise man. He wrote the book of Proverbs, Ecclesiastics, and the Song of Solomon. Solomon's gift of wisdom and discernment was immediately tested when two mothers came to him to judge a situation. The story is written in 1 Kings 3, 24 through 28. Both mothers had just given birth. One mother's baby died and was claiming the other mother's live baby was hers. We pick up the story in verse 23 to 26. Then the king said, bring me a sword. So they brought a sword for the king. He then gave an order, cut the living child in two and give half to the one and half to the other. The, wo the woman whose son was alive was deeply moved out of love for her son and said to the king, please, my Lord, give her the living baby. Don't kill him. But the other said, neither I nor you shall have him cut him in two. So, of course, the woman uh, who said, moved out of compassion, said, uh, please give her the, uh, the baby, was truly the mother. So he operated with wisdom and discernment. The next slide, we look at Paul and Silas in Acts 16. It's written, once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. 
Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the, the spirit left her. In the next slide, I believe it's really critical that we take note what the slave girl said was absolutely true. This is an example of Satan coming in like an angel of light. Written in 2 Corinthians 11, 13 to 15, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their work. Jesus said in Matthew 7 to 15, or 7, 15, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Okay, so this is uh, some personal experiences that I'm going to share briefly. And on the right, you'll see our prayer group, some of the members of our prayer group, not everyone's there, of course. And this, is, this picture is taken at Mark and Vicki's house. And we would gather uh, many times uh, through the week, Tuesdays, I guess it was, I think, Vicki, at your house. I sure miss the good old days before COVID. Anyway, discerning of spirits. We've had plenty of experience, haven't we, discerning spirits uh, during the years at our prayer group. And I remember when I was fairly new at leading the prayer group, I had my first encounter with an evil spirit. The prayer group members were standing in a circle and we were praising and worshiping the Lord when a newcomer decided to move outside the circle and walk around the circle, making these odd looking uh, motions by jerking her knee and hands. Finally, I realized this was not an act of worship, it was an evil spirit. And then also a former uh, prayer group member, Pauline Jovacchini, always wanted to go with Bob on one of his trips somewhere to minister. And so Bob was going to Kansas City, Missouri, and of course I'm from Missouri, so I said, let's go with Bob. So Pauline and I traveled with Bob to Kansas City uh, to a mass and healing service. And at one point, Bob called Pauline and I down to help pray with people. I was praying with a woman. She told me what was wrong. I started to pray and then she stopped me and she'd say something else. I start to pray again. She stopped me and I had to pray again for something else. And finally, I finally dawned on me. This was a evil spirit. Uh, I called it a spirit of gaming. And then discerning God's direction. Um, when dad learned he had stage four lung cancer in April, 2012, and just by the way, he's going strong, decisions had to be made on where to obtain treatment. Should we stay in the small community hospital or travel 360 miles north to Rochester, Minnesota to Mayo Clinic? People warned us that it's difficult to obtain an appointment at Mayo Clinic. On one Sunday afternoon, I requested an appointment uh, on the Mayo Clinic website. On Tuesday, I called and the person answering the phone, yes, there was no recording greeting, greeting. It was a live person answering the phone. She said, I was just reading your request for appointment. We were at Mayo a few days later, a few weeks later, excuse me. And then a few weeks ago, Joe from New Mexico gave a testimony regarding his car trouble, which occurred at night. He didn't have a cell phone, so what should he do? He tried hitchhiking, but no one picked him up. He started to walk, but thought it was unwise to do so with an infected ankle. He wasn't for sure what to do. He needed discernment. He prayed and asked God for direction. As he walked back to his car, less than a minute after he prayed, the sheriff pulled over and helped him out. Joe was using the gift of discernment in the moment of a difficult situation. And then discerning the word or message. Last week, I learned um, our director of accounting decided to resign to return to school to become a CPA. That makes total sense to me, but the timing is terrible uh, for the operation because we're just starting our budget planning for 2023. On May 22nd, Sunday morning, I woke up with a message from the Lord. I went right into discernment mode, which I'll talk about in a moment. I was asking, is this from God? Is this from me or is this from the enemy? The message, the instruction was for me to call a colleague and inquire about his former director of accounting. So I text the colleague 
And he texts the former director of accounting who just happened to be in between jobs and was very much interested. We spoke briefly on Sunday afternoon, conducted a formal interview on May 23rd, and he accepted the job and Lord willing, he plans to start on May 31st. That is of the Lord and all glory to him. Okay, talking about discernment mode. When I receive a word or a vision or a scripture, I go into discernment mode asking, is this from the Lord? Is it from me, my flesh, or from the evil one? When I have peace, I step out by faith and it's usually confirmed by someone in the group or by the person with whom I'm praying for. Now I will say there's sometimes when it's not confirmed. And I remember years and years ago when I first started going to this prayer group, I was not part of the core leadership. I was at a um, mass and healing service and Bob was calling out uh, something. I don't remember what it was and no one responded. It was for me and Bob, I never responded. So, you know, when you do receive a word and no one responds, it doesn't mean that the word was not from God. I can bear witness to that, but it, it is helpful when, you know, someone does step out and confirm it. So, you know, when you're praying with someone and they confirm with what you're saying, uh, this builds your faith and your discerner is sharpened. In the early days when I started receiving a word during the prayer group, Bob would encourage everyone to share the word that, was, uh, that God placed on our hearts. But back in those days, I was really shy and did not want to share anything. Um, I was receiving words and I analyzed the words so much that the Lord had someone else speak out the word. Even though that happened, it did build my faith to know that the word he gave me was truly from him. Bob always warned us about analysis by paralysis syndrome. And that is analyzing the word, the message, or the situation to the point it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, we're paralyzed because we didn't respond to it. So when I'm making an important decision that will affect the operation at work, or perhaps it's a decision that will affect my personal life, I go into discernment mode and many times there's many options that is before you to choose from. And how do you discern the right decision? Well, I know one thing for sure. If I lose my peace, I stop, regroup, and seek God. For me, if I have peace, I move forward. If I don't have peace, I stop. And peace, God's peace is very essential when you're making decisions. You know, at that time, if you lose your peace, you need to go back into a quiet space, spend time with God to discern his direction. And the next slide uh, is a checklist of activities to strengthen your gift of discernment for uh, decision making. One, pray to God. How often? Pray without ceasing. You ask God for help like Joe did uh, that night when his car broke down. Two, invite the Holy Spirit to be your guide. John 16, 13. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. Three, exercise the gift of discernment in all areas of your life every day. Apply this gift to the simple decisions and situations to the more complex. I sometimes even ask God, what should I wear? And, he, you know, he helps out in that area as well. Okay, the next slide. Four, study the scriptures. Apply the word of God to your life your situation, and to the decision that you are facing to make. God speaks to us through his word. Your decision should always be in agreement with his word. Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Hebrews 5, 14, but solid food is for the mature. For those who have their power of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Again, we need to exercise the gift of discernment. And the next slide, uh, study scriptures continue, Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerns the thoughts and intentions of the heart. 1 Thessalonians 5.21, but test everything, hold fast what is good. And then number five is listen to godly counsel. We have no lone rangers in the body of Christ. In Ephesians 4.16, from him, referring to Jesus, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows 
and builds itself up in love as each part does, it, does its work. We all fit together in the body of Christ and we have no lone rangers. And then also uh, Proverbs, Proverbs 11, 14, where no counsel is, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. And then the next slide is the last, number six, obey God, obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit. First Samuel 15, 22, to obey is better than sacrifice. John 10, two through four, the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. Amen. So the next slide, um, I have a prayer on the next three slides. So I'd like, uh, this is at the end of uh, the teaching, I would like for us to uh, mute, make sure you're mute. But if, as I speak out this prayer for discernment, please uh, speak it out loud with me as we pray for the gift of discernment uh, and also to sharpen the gift of discernment that we have. All right, Father, I surrender my spirit, my soul, mind, will, and emotions, and my body to you in Jesus' name. Father, not my will, but your will be done in my life in the name of Jesus. Father, I repent from all sins in the name of Jesus. Father, create in me a clean heart with the precious blood of your son, my Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for your unconditional love for me in Jesus' name. Father, I ask for your mercy to prevail over my life in Jesus' name. Father, fill me with your gift of discernment. Sharpen this gift within me in the name of Jesus. Father, open my eyes to see what you want me to see in Jesus' name. Father, open my ears to hear your voice in the name of Jesus. Father, open my heart to receive your love and power in Jesus' name. Father, by the direction of the Holy Spirit, order my steps on the right path in the name of Jesus. Father, I declare today that no weapon formed against me shall prosper in Jesus' name. Father, I declare my days of spiritual blindness and deafness are over in the name of Jesus. Father, I declare your gift of discernment is at work in my life to help me discern the truth, to help me make right decisions, and to know the direction I am to walk in the name of Jesus. Father, all glory, all honor to you. You are worthy of all praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. And then the closing word, just like to speak this over everyone is taken from Philippians 1, 9 through 10. And this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. to see your face open my eyes Lord help me to see open my ears Lord help me to love, hear your voice Sorry. open my ears Lord, help me to hear, open my heart.
Now in me. 